So, you've just managed to place a subclavian line in a trauma patient with hypovolemic shock. After resuscitation, a trauma CT is performed and the radiologist informs you that the CVC is actually placed in the left subclavian artery. Ouch! Every invasive procedure we perform comes with the risk of complications. We do our utmost to avoid them, but when they do, you must know how to deal with them. To avoid arterial complications, make sure that you've positively identified both the artery and the vein during the pre-scan. Furthermore, you must be able to see the entire length of your cannula at all times, as you catheterize using the in-plane approach. If you do not see the tip, do not proceed. Finally, when you've inserted the guide wire, double check is in the vein before you dilate. An arterial puncture will usually be blatantly obvious, unless the patient has an extremely low blood pressure. Your first instinct may be to retract the cannula. Don't. Stop, cover the bore, and think. If it's only the cannula, you can remove it and apply pressure until the bleeding has stopped. You'll probably be fine, but you need to keep the patient for observation, as the swelling on the neck can cause airway problems. If it's the subclavian artery, compression may be harder. We suggest you use ultrasound to make sure there is no hidden bleeding. If the patient is coagulopathic, now may be a good time to administer procoagulants. If you have proceeded with dilatation and catheter placement, the situation is more severe. Now here's a patient with an accidental right-sided carotid artery catheter and a venous line from the left side. There is a serious risk of stroke for the patient, either due to plaque rupture or air embolism. Leave the catheter in place and call the vascular surgeon. There is no stroke risk with a subclavian artery puncture, but the location calls for contact with the vascular surgeon. They may consider an open repair or a covered stent graft. There may be another option available in your hospital. Vascular surgeons and interventional cardiologists use a suture-mediated closure device like ProGlide to seal large arteries after angiography. This requires a guide wire, so it can only be used if you don't retract the dilator or catheter, but it may solve the problem. A word of warning though, you have to make sure that you haven't also passed through the vein on your way to the artery. A femoral artery puncture is not as serious. You should still discuss your case with a vascular surgeon, but it's not unlikely that they recommend that you apply a device like Femostop. Now let's talk about pneumothorax. When I'm about to place a subclavian line in a patient with ARDS, or if the vein is small, or the patient is moving around a lot, I include an assessment of lung sliding in my pre-scan. This gives me a reference, so I know what to expect if I want to make sure that there is no pneumothorax after the catheterization. A central line associated with pneumothorax is generally not a big issue in a spontaneously breathing patient with healthy lungs. This asymptomatic patient has a small right-sided pneumothorax that may have been caused by the central line placement. As the patient is not on positive pressure ventilation, a suitable course of action is to regularly check for symptoms and repeat the chest x-ray after 4 and 24 hours to assess any enlargement of the pneumothorax. Consecutive ultrasound exams where the degree of lung sliding is assessed is also an acceptable follow-up. If it's not a big pneumo, don't do anything rash. With a large or enlarging pneumothorax or the development of clinical symptoms, the patient needs a chest tube. This 3D reconstruction of a chest CT shows a ventral pigtail. You either know how to place a chest tube or you call for help. Then we have the special case with mechanically ventilated patients with high levels of PEEP. We've already told you to proceed with extreme caution in these cases. If you cause a pneumothorax, it's very likely that the patient will deteriorate quickly. Should your mechanically ventilated patient develop severe symptoms, like very low SATs and blood pressure, get a scalpel and a kettle clamp and approach the safe triangle to quickly open the pleura to air. This should alleviate the symptoms and you can then place the chest tube with less hurry. These are the most serious complications you can have when you place central lines. You need to know about them and you need to know how to handle them.